Welcome to St. Mary's here in Ballinrobe, County Mayo. Many thanks to the clergy and the Ballinrobe community for their support over the past 150 years. Around 1848, the young curate, Father Peter Conway, negotiated with Colonel Nesbitt Knox and his wife Jane Cuff, the local landlords, to acquire a site off Market Street for a new church. The foundation stone was laid in 1849. However, due to a very dark period in our history, the Great Famine, St. Mary's was not completed until 1863. The first architect was Richard Pierce, who had been influenced by his boss, Augustus Pugin. However, he died during construction, and the second architect was William George Murray, who completed the building. Notice the belfry, the diamond pane glass in the windows, and the single story curate's house to the rear. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, Reverend James Ronane and Monsignor Dalton carried out extensive expansions to the church, including building transepts and a new steeple for its bell, which was consecrated in 1894. Members of the clergy and the local community donated the large East Mayor window, the pulpit, lighting, seating, stained glass windows for the new transepts, new altar rails, marble steps, etc culminating with a mortuary chapel in 1914. Joshua Clark designed the stained glass windows for this chapel, which is at the left of the altar. This beautiful window of four panels is interesting for comparison with the work of Joshua's son, Harry Clark, who had been an apprentice with him for some years. In 1924, Harry Clark was invited by Monsignor Dalton to design and create stained glass windows suitable for the new extensions of the side aisle. When installed, the local community were pleased with the work and a further six windows were commissioned. These included four of the early Irish Saint series on the north side, including the predellas at their base. We are fortunate to have signed copies of the original designs by Clark who came to St. Mary's in December 1925 to see his creations in situ. The detail in this drawing of the wonderful depiction of St. Brendan displays Harry's imaginative genius, where he uses delicate, beautiful, elongated figures, chiselled features and large, expressive eyes. He had been inspired by the 12th century medieval glass of European cathedrals and churches. The early 20th century was a time of unprecedented artistic diversity in Ireland and Clark was its foremost symbolist artist. Here we see a bearded St. Brendan holding an oar and two fish. Magnificent jewel-like colours of scarlet, greens, pinks, mauves, orange and yellows bring this window to life. The fish scales appear to shimmer and the very realistic timber oar represents St. Brendan's many voyages. The netting fabric of his alb matches the fishing scene in his predella below, which is the only night scene in the series. Located close to his pamputi shod feet is a bird of paradise, representing the soul. According to legend, this bird never touched the earth. Each saint's name is recorded on a scroll to the side or below his pedestal. Waves and the sea dominate here, which corresponds to his symbol above. With Harry's original design for this symbol, we can see the transition to the finished piece. Located high up and easy to miss, this is where binoculars would be useful, as it gives you an amazing perspective on the work of Harry Clark. Traditionally used in the iconography of Mary in art, blue is associated as the colour of heaven and we can see it to its best advantage here in the coronation of the Queen of Heaven. A crowned Jesus honours his mother by crowning her as Queen. Mary is represented 
as a beautiful young woman. In this first detail, notice the precision of design of the feet of Jesus within the swirling waters of the Jordan River. In medieval times, the devil was sometimes depicted as a small green figure. Clark may have used this hideous green overall figure to represent evil. While the original is small, this elegant figure is from the Pedella, the agony in the garden. In St. Fahin's Predilla, Clark has inserted himself as a young boy reading a book. The children of the parish call this the Harry Potter window. To celebrate the centenary of Harry Clark's birth in 1988, restoration work on the windows resulted in them being brought to the Abbey Stained Glass Studios for repair. And when they were replaced, storm glass was inserted to protect them. Once again, the community had supported this work. Once again, 13 years later, restoration work to the fabric of the building, supported by the community, was carried out, resulting in a secure and safe building for everybody. One of the results of this work was a decision by Father Connell, RPP, to open up the organ gallery and display these three wonderful panels of St. Patrick, St. Bridget and St. Colum Kill. <laughs>